You pour a glass of bourbon. That amber glow catches the light. Rich, warm, inviting. But here's what most people never realize. When that whiskey first came off the still, it was completely clear. Like water or vodka, every drop of golden color you see came from somewhere else entirely. And while that transformation happened, 2% of your whiskey vanished into thin air every single year. Where did it go and what did it leave behind? Around the 12th century, Irish monks began experimenting with distillation techniques they'd learned from traveling through southern Europe. They modified the process to create a drinkable spirit from grain. They called it Huisca Beatha, Water of Life. The name eventually shortened to whiskey. Early monks used it primarily for medicine, believing the clear liquid held healing properties. They had no idea that the real transformation would happen not in the still, but in wooden barrels stored in dark warehouses for years. The first written record of whiskey appears in 1405 when Irish annals noted a clan chief died from taking too much aqua vitae at Christmas. By the 15th century, distillation had spread to Scotland, and both countries began the tradition that would eventually circle the globe. Fresh whiskey coming off a still looks nothing like what ends up in your glass. Distillers call it white dog or new make spread. It's harsh, grainy, and completely colorless. The flavor is raw and unrefined. Some describe it as tasting like hot bread soaked in alcohol. This clear liquid contains all the chemical compounds that will eventually become bourbon or scotch. But those compounds need time and wood to transform. Without aging, whiskey would remain forever clear and harsh. The barrel does everything. 60% of the final flavor and 100% of the color come from the wood itself. The clear spirit that enters the barrel is not the same drink that emerges years later. American bourbon must age in new charred oak barrels. The charring process burns the interior wood for 15 to 55 seconds, creating a blackened layer up to a quarter inch thick. This char acts as both filter and flavor factory. Heat causes the wood's hemicellulose to break down into sugars that caramelize on the surface. Lignin releases vanillin, the compound that gives bourbon its vanilla notes. Tannins provide color and that dry, complex finish. Within weeks, clear whiskey begins absorbing these compounds, shifting from transparent to pale gold. As years pass, the liquid penetrates deeper. The color deepens from straw yellow to amber to deep mahogany. A 15-year-old bourbon looks dramatically different from a 4-year-old. So if the barrel provides all the flavor and color, why does whiskey need years instead of weeks to mature? Because the barrel breathes? Oak is porous. As temperatures rise and fall with the seasons, the whiskey expands into the wood and contracts back out. Hot Kentucky summers push liquid deep into charred layers. Cold winters pull it back. This seasonal breathing drives the extraction of compounds that quick aging cannot replicate. Warehouses are not climate-controlled deliberately. The temperature swings are essential. Barrels stored on higher floors experience greater fluctuations and age faster. The same whiskey, same barrel type, same distillery. Different floors produce different results. Every year, around 2 to 5% of the whiskey evaporates through the porous wood. Distillers call this the Angel's Share, a romantic name for a real cost. After 18 years in Kentucky, a barrel might contain only a third of its original volume. The Angels have taken the rest. Climate determines what evaporates. In humid Scotland, more alcohol escapes than water. So aged, Scotch actually decreases in proof over time. In dry Kentucky, water evaporates faster 
concentrating the alcohol. American bourbons often grow stronger as they age. The evaporation isn't waste. It concentrates flavors, removes harsh volatile compounds, and allows oxygen to slowly interact with the liquid. The angels take quantity, but leave quality behind. Here's the part that surprises everyone. The angel's share doesn't just disappear. It leaves evidence. A black fungus called Baudwania compnicensis thrives on airborne ethanol. First documented near Cognac distilleries in France in 1872. This whiskey fungus coats everything within a mile of aging warehouses. Trees, fences, buildings, cars, all turn black with sooty growth. The closer to the warehouse, the thicker it grows. Scientists only identified it properly in 2007, though distillers had noticed it for centuries. Communities near Kentucky distilleries now deal with the fungus covering their property. The romantic notion of angels taking their share has a very visible, very dark footprint. That amber color in your glass represents years of chemical transformation. Clear grain alcohol entered a charred oak barrel. Seasons passed. The liquid breathed in and out of blackened wood, extracting sugars, vanillin tannins, and melanoidins. 2% disappeared each year feeding fungus in nearby trees while concentrating what remained. The same whiskey that monks called water of life 600 years ago still transforms the same way today. Different grains, different climates, different barrels. But the fundamental process remains unchanged. Time, wood, and evaporation turn harsh, clear spirit into the complex amber drink that catches light so beautifully in your hand. Next time you hold a glass of whiskey to the light, you'll see something different. Not just color, chemistry, years of seasonal breathing, thousands of extractions from charred wood, and a portion that escaped to feed fungus on distant trees while you waited. The angels took their share so you could have yours. Every sip contains what the evaporation left behind, the part too valuable to disappear. Monks called it water of life 600 years ago. They had no idea how right they were. What's the oldest whiskey you've ever tasted?